Hey everybody, it's John Reed here for BlackBeerOS.com. Today I want to review a new app that's just appeared in BlackBerry World called Mirio Don't Panic. Now this app is an online and offline GPS navigator for the BlackBerry 10. I'm just loading it up here. The app itself is special It's because simply you can download the maps you need and then they will be available for your BlackBerry whenever you're out on the road, no matter what your signal is. It's been a while since we've had a full-on proper GPS app on BlackBerry, so it's very exciting to see this. Now the maps for Mirio range depending on how big they are. For the Western European maps, which I've downloaded, they were $30, but that is a lifetime fee. The other thing about the maps is that they also quite a heavy download. The Western maps were 2.5 gigabytes to download, so if you're going to download this app, make sure you're on a Wi-Fi hotspot and that you're ready to download it for a good amount of time. Now, what's good about this, let's go into the store of the app first of all. So in the menu here we have a shopping cart in the bottom. This is probably where you're going to start because when you first run it you can download a trial version of one of their maps which will last for just over a week. There you are, free trial maps. I've already downloaded the Eastern European maps before so that's what it's saying I have available. But you will have an option for more maps which if we go into the main map store here we have Western European, Eastern European, North American, and a few others as well. British Isles there, for instance, for $19. So there's a good range, and you don't have to buy all the maps outright. You can just purchase them when you need them. Another nice touch is that you can also purchase premium points of interest. which right now only has points of interest for Greece unfortunately and also there is a section for voices. Now the voices that are stock available for the app are getting lost already. The voices that are available for the stock app are free but you can add comedian voices as well which you can purchase however they are there isn't a huge range at the moment I'm sure they're going to add to it Another cool feature is that you can download 3D buildings for your maps which will appear as you're navigating around. There's a few selections and the great news is, this, the, is these are all free to download. You don't have to pay for the 3D buildings. Likewise, there's a live traffic service which goes is integrated into the maps. These you have to pay for once again. It's $19 for Western Europe and $15 for North America. However, once you've paid for that, that is a lifetime subscription. You don't have to pay again. OK, so let's look at the map view. Now, what you can see here is it's your typical GPS fare. You've got an arrow in the middle to show you where you are, which this is actually quite accurate because I am actually at the back of my house while recording this. You have some controls on the screen, details of the speed you're going, battery, etc, etc. One of the nice things, because this is actually a 3D rendering of the map, so rather than just showing static images, you can use your finger to zoom around and pan along the image wherever you want to go without any problems. It's incredibly quick and responsive because of that and very fluid as well. I'm just going to tap the red icon here to go back to the, where we are. The other thing you can do is you have the zoom controller here which will allow you to either zoom in and out just by pressing the button. So if you tap them again you have some preset zoom options. You can zoom right out or right in and the other options are somewhere between. You also have this compass here, it shows you once first of all which direction you're facing. Right now we're looking at north. And if you tap it, it brings up more controls. You can set the map between 2D and 3D. Change your uh, facing po point to either be north or in the direction you're moving. And finally this little button here which is quite useful. Because as well as being able to pan around, you can use it to rotate the map. If we do that again, like so. And this this allows multi-touch gestures as well, so you can zoom in and out by pinching and squeezing, and also swiping up and down with two fingers will allow you to pan the map up and down, so you can switch to that 2D, 3D. This is all kind of one view, rather than being separate 2D and 3D maps, so it's all very slick and well integrated. Now, as well as the controls, let's just press the button to get back to where we are. You have the needed trip 
items. So let's uh, hit the menu here. You have your favourites. Let's try Downing Street in London. I'm a regular visitor there, of course. And there we are, straight there. And as you can see, I've already installed the 3D map pack as well. So I'm just going to change the zoom there and go across. As you can see, the 3D buildings are actually very well defined and they look gorgeous on the screen. So there we have Nelson's Column. If we zoom back a bit, I think you'll find there we are. Big Ben, I think the Houses of Parliament should pop up in a moment. Covent Garden there, just in the flesh. So that is a really nice feature as well. Obviously, it's only going to be major landmarks to have 3D buildings. I'm sure it would take up a fair amount of space otherwise, but it is a really nice feature on there. So let's actually look at the trip options themselves. So back into the menu here, let's go to Route. And here you have trip details. This tells you how long you've been traveling and the like. You can also change the route calculation types, avoid various things like unpaved roads and highways and toll roads. As well as that, you have the dashboard view. So if you're not actually needing the navigator, you can still use this. It will show you speed, the direction you're going, how far you are above sea level, and how accurate the GPS is at the moment. So it's a very handy item to have as well. Now, route calculation is also really sw really quick. Let's quickly go into there now. So I'm going to tap route. No, I wanted to go to favorites. Try that again. So from where we are, tap that. And I shouldn't have tapped the map. Navigate to. We go there. Head east. And straight away, the navigation route's there. No problems, you can tap the, sorry, you can tap the screen as well and it gives you details of the nearest points of interest, like this is the nearest petrol station and likewise the nearest place to go shopping. So it integrates into some useful points of interest and also integrates into Foursquare if you want to focus in on a map and find things that are nearby. So let's look at the route view again and now we have the trip in detail here so it shows us we've got 77 miles to go it also shows us where we're going and a nice touch here you can clear the route by deleting or you can save it and use the route again later on and that squeezes right between the trip which is now turned into directions and once again the dashboard view so a very very nice app and works really well Let's just twist that round. You can see the map appear there. I'm going to actually start zooming out now and change it to the 2D perspective. And with no trouble whatsoever, that route is there. Let's keep zooming out. Might look make more sense. And there it is in London. So fantastic integration and the way it works. Now there are some drawbacks to this app and the first one is that it is very heavy on the battery. If you're going to use this for navigating around in your car you must must have a battery charger. You couple in the use of the GPS along with the 3D map view and it is going to really drain things down so when you are using it seriously make sure it is plugged in in your car or at the very least you have a spare battery with you. The other issue I've found is that because of the map sizes, the downloads are something really serious to consider. The Western European maps, for instance, that I was talking about earlier, are two and a half gigabytes. However, they are stored on the device, not your SD card. Now, whether they plan to change this or not, I don't know. But obviously, if you're limited on space on your Z10, then you are going to have to have second thoughts about which maps you download. And a minor thing I had is when I tried using it with a low battery yesterday out in the car, it was having trouble locking onto my GPS signal. Certainly if you're going to download these maps and go using it straight away, keep it charged up to begin with, otherwise you may run into problems when you start navigating. But all that being said, there are minor issues and it is a very impressive piece of software. And if you need a good, solid GPS nap, then check out Mirio, don't panic, on the BlackBerry Z10. And check that out in that world. 
Keep an eye on the blogs for more coming soon. All the best, John Readout.